Hey, Cider Explorers, good to see you all again. Got two really fun ciders to go through uh, this month. First off, we have Fooder Forces, um, a lovely collab that we did with our friends in Rhode Island at Proclamation Ales. If you haven't had their beers before, they are absolutely delicious and really adventurous, just like our stuff. This was a co-fermented cherry fooder cider. Um, it was a really interesting concept that came from just meeting with them at a festival and kind of just coming up with a, a fun, cool idea that we've never done before. Uh, so what they did was they shipped us over their fooder culture from uh, their fermenting beer. We shipped them our fooder culture from our fermenting cider, and we each made a similar style. It's kind of like Ginny, Cherry, Wildies fermented cider beer combo collab. Um, when we received their culture, obviously beer has gluten in it, so we used an enzyme to remove the gluten from this one gallon pitch that we then pitched into the 800 gallon batch that we made, removed all the gluten out of that, so it is still a gluten-free product, um, but then co-pitched that with the Balton cherries um, and cider. And the Balton cherries, I don't know if you guys remember the Native Creek, but it is the traditional kind of Creek style, like uh, Lambic style uh, cherry that they use in Belgium. Really love that cherry and was really excited to work with it again for this project. To kind of move away from super traditional, one thing we did do was we took a more gin inspired uh, take on this um, where we used a little bit of kaffir lime leaves, um, which is a, you typically using a lot of uh, Indian style cooking and curries and stuff like that. Um, and it has a really cool lime presence, but it's a little more herbal, a little more like lemon balmy, and then a little bit of black pepper along with juniper berries to give it a really cool kind of presence with that wild yeast fermented cherry stuff. Um, the fooder portion in this was blended out of our fooder um, into uh, the fooder forces collab. So it's like a blend of maybe three different pieces from the Balton cherry uh, co-culture ferment with the Proclamation Ales to the fooder to our base cider kind of all coming together and creating this really cool thing. And if you guys see the label, Rock'em Sock'em Robots meets fooders, AKA large barrels. It's a lot of fun, you know, even Caleb with his cheeky kids, ages 21 plus. Love it. So let's give it a crack. Right off, you can see like that really nice cherry color kind of coming in. And this one I think really kind of captures a lot of the cool characteristics of yeast kind of with that co-fermented fruit. So let's give it a sniff. Right off the gate, you're getting that wild yeasty characteristic mixed with like Subtle cherry notes and a little bit of that like lime black pepper kind of coming through. Oh wow. Yeah, this one's really evolving well in the can. It's been about a week in the can and I'm really getting the cherry notes now. And then the subtlety of the juniper, the black pepper and the kefir limes lies underneath, but you're really getting this well-rounded, slightly, slightly ginny, um, beautifully fermented ballots and cherry flavor in it. And this is absolutely excellent. So I hope you'll enjoy this one. Last of the fall uh, Nordic Mead series, another Kavik yeast ferment, this time focusing on raspberries. Um, and I don't know if you've been following along with these, but a lot of them have been more like, I guess, again, more like cocktail-y in their, their representation, more like Amaro-y and maybe more uh, like shrub based in their builds from the blackberry to the uh, the uh, blueberry that we did originally. This one, captive audience, I wanna do something a little more traditional. We don't do a whole lot with traditional fall flavors at Graft. We leave that for, you know, all the other cideries in the world. Um, but this one kind of falls into a little more of that traditional flavor, because I wanna do one traditional one. You know, it's always fun to play around. So this one's a little more chai inspired. So it uses a blend of like cardamom, cinnamon, clove, ginger, all those kind of fun things, a little bit of vanilla, all those fun things that kind of go into, and you can see the art again, always doing a great job with the art, just super fall inspired colors. Uh, you know, the, the Ashen Fairies got the, uh, got the local mayor captive and there's moths. It's another fever dream from Caleb. Always, always enjoy those. So this was just kind of a take on something a little more traditional with uh, like a raspberry backbone. You can again see Really great presence of raspberry just through the color right there. So let's give it a sniff. Right on the nose, you're getting this mulled cider kind of experience. A little bit of chai coming through. Um, a little bit of those raspberry notes sneaking in as well. Definitely smells like drier. So even though we're doing like these fall spice things, it's not a super sweet product. And graft, you know, as you know, is never too sweet. Let's give it a sniff, or let's give it a taste.
Really nice balance of flavors here. The raspberry kind of melds into that chai experience. And you get a little bit of honey on the backbone. It is like a, like below a semi-sweet. I think the vanilla really helps pop up the sweetness on this one. Uh, but a really cool, fun experience to sip as we kind of wind in to the end of fall and move into winter. Speaking of winter, up next is our wild wine series. This year, because of just how the harvest went in the Hudson Valley, we are focusing on one grape varietal. Um, and I think that, that'll be a fun experience because we'll really get to dive in to that single grape varietal and try a lot of different things. And that's the Riesling grape. Um, so we have a couple fun concepts where we're fermenting on those grape skins and then also have a new fun Cloud City that is inspired for the holidays next month. Until next time, guys, thank you so much.